After zombies have invaded the whole planet, people can only live at this base in the middle of the desert. At the beginning of the story, Alice, wakes up in a bathroom in some kind of mansion. The girl is confused and doesn't understand where she is and how she got here. After getting dressed, she walks out into the hallway, and her attention is drawn to a mysterious door. Behind it is an unusual and extremely dangerous room. She touches the wall and frightening moments from the past flash before her eyes. Suddenly the door to the room closes. A laser beam comes out of the walls and approaches Alice with tremendous speed. She reacts quickly and dodges the laser by jumping to the ceiling. The girl has no idea yet that this is just the beginning of a terrifying ordeal. Now a laser net is looming over her. Alice remains unharmed again, having jumped into the ventilation shaft. Terrified, Alice makes her way down the shaft and finds her way out into the corridor. After looking around, she realizes she is in a hospital. The girl discovers a medical gurney and runs down the corridor with it to avoid another trap. After a couple of seconds, a glass screen descends from the ceiling, splitting the gurney in two in an instant. Alice is terrified, shaking with fear but continues on her way cautiously. The girl has not even had time to walk a few meters, when suddenly a mine rises from the floor and releases shrapnel directly into Alice's stomach. The girl's injury looks fatal. She looks hopelessly at her hands, covered in red liquid, and falls. Men in protective suits approach Alice's body. One of them, Dr. Isaacs, orders the others to take samples of the girl's red fluid and then dispose of her. A view of an ordinary house in a deserted area is revealed. Suddenly, men in protective suits with Alice in their arms rise from an underground laboratory. They dump her body into a trench where there are the bodies of dozens more girls like her. All of them are just clones who failed the tests. But what happened to the real Alice? Is she alive? The area where the entrance to the secret laboratory is located is enclosed by iron bars. It is a lifeless desert all around. Outside, a mob of zombies rushes at the fence. The underground lab belongs to the Umbrella Corporation. Its employees thought they were in control of a terrible infection that turns people into mindless monsters. But the experiment got out of control. The T-virus first spread through the town of Raccoon City, but scientists and the military were unable to contain it. In a few weeks it swallowed up the United States, and a few months later the entire world. The highly destructive virus wiped out not only humans. All life on the planet gradually began to die. Rivers and lakes dried up, forests and fields turned into barren deserts. Groups of survivors learned to live in endless traveling. Staying in one place was too dangerous. The real Alice, like other survivors, wanders across America in search of food and fuel. She stops at an abandoned building and goes inside. The girl is very careful, because danger lurks around every corner. In one of the rooms, Alice sees a surviving woman with a baby. Without lowering her gun, she approaches the people. The crying woman begs for help for her baby. Alice hides the gun and takes the baby in her arms. But after a closer look, she discovers that it is only a doll. At the same moment, she finds herself at gunpoint. A family of marauders attacks her. One of the men starts to molest Alice, but with a strong blow to the leg, the girl takes him out. The rest of the family stuns her and Alice faints. The girl wakes up in a room with many cages containing infected dogs. They are wildly aggressive and ready to tear Alice apart at any second. The family decides to amuse themselves by releasing the zombie dogs to tear the poor girl apart. But these people have no idea of the outcome of their ridiculous and cruel plan. Alice uses her amazing abilities and destroys both the dogs and all the marauders. Her incredibly fast reactions and dexterity help her stay unscathed in this fight. She picks up her remaining weapons and sets off again. A group of survivors are traveling across the vast desert in cars and buses. Oh, 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 oh. That was a juicy one. Huh? This group consists of several dozen people, including Claire, Carlos, LJ, Betty, and Otto. They radio each other from different cars and deal with all the pressing issues. Meanwhile, more and more zombies keep popping up on the highway. The science department of the Umbrella Corporation, led by Dr. Isaacs, reports to Chairman Wesker on the level of biological danger in their region. Isaacs says these monsters don't need to feed in order to exist, but they crave human flesh, and it could go on for decades. We're to be trapped underground for decades? Wesker orders Isaacs to report on the Alice Project. The doctor claims that the antibodies in Alice's red fluid will help him develop a serum. This substance will be able to fight the effects of the T-virus in the human body. The doctor estimates that the serum could partially restore cognitive function to zombies and curb their lust for flesh. Isaacs plans to tame these creatures like animals and use them as free labor. The management of the corporation doubts the doctor's plans, as many experiments he has conducted have yielded no results. In his excuse, Isaacs says that he needs the source material, i.e., the real Alice. Now the scientific department works only with her clones, so the results of the whole project are unpredictable. Dr. Isaacs is ordered to continue his research and achieve the necessary results, because Alice is the main project of the entire corporation. After finishing the meeting, the chairman disappear, 
and it turns out that they were only holograms. Alice is still traveling. She fires a crossbow at a zombie to approach a gas station, but there hasn't been any fuel there for a long time. The girl cautiously enters the abandoned store. She notices a door and decides to open it. Behind it, the girl sees a decomposing body and many flies. Alice clears her throat from the disgusting smell and wishes to leave quickly, but suddenly she notices an open diary on the floor. She takes it and goes outside. Alice turns her attention to the zombie she destroyed. A huge raven is devouring its infected flesh. Claire Redfield's group also continues on their journey. The survivors decide to stop at one of the empty motels. Mikey, one of the group, tries to make contact with the other survivors, but no one answers. Carlos and L. J. cautiously enter the motel. They slowly and carefully look around all the rooms, keeping their weapons at the ready. LJ opens the door to one of the rooms. Suddenly, a zombie pounces on him from the hallway. The guy destroys the deranged creature. A few seconds later, however, a female zombie pounces on him and bites him. LJ says nothing to Carlos and the other survivors. Meanwhile, new experiments are being conducted in the underground lab. Dr. Isaacs injects one of the infected with a serum based on Alice's red clone fluid. The zombie demonstrates some cognitive abilities. For example, he understands how to use a telephone and a camera. Scientists state that he can remember information and think logically. Suddenly, however, he is overcome by an outburst of uncontrollable rage. The zombie pounces on the scientists and destroys them. Dr. Isaacs, on the other hand, hides behind a glass panel and quietly watches as his colleagues are devoured. In the desert, Otto hands out canned food to everyone in the group. Food supplies are low, but fuel is even less. How are we looking here? Well, Claire, if we can run these trucks on rust, looking pretty good. Carlos sets up cameras and motion sensors around the perimeter of the area where the survivors are camped out. Mikey confirms that the equipment is working and everything is under control. He tries to contact other survivors again. Alice hears a signal from the group, but ignores it. The girl reads the diary she found and suddenly notices notes that there are no infected people in Alaska. It is possible to start a new life there. Dr. Isaac activates a new clone of Alice. At the same time, the real Alice's sleep is disturbed by memories of her escape from the laboratory in Raccoon City. Objects start mysteriously floating around the girl. Suddenly a clone of Alice wakes up. The eyes of the real Alice open at the same second, and everything in the air falls to the ground, including her motorcycle. The White Queen, a computer system with artificial intelligence, appears in Isaac's lab. She informs the scientists that her instruments have detected a spike of psionic activity. Isaacs assumes that these signals could have come from Alice's clone, but the White Queen claims that the activity is detected outside the underground complex, and its epicenter is in the desert area. Isaacs realizes that only the real Alice can wield such power. Alice wanders through the vast desert. The group of survivors is relaxing in their cars. Suddenly, Kay Mart, a girl in the group, is awakened by a strange sound from outside the car. She cautiously opens the door. The frightened girl notices an aggressive bird and informs the others. The entire team is on alert. Soon the men realize they are surrounded by a whole flock of infected ravens. Carlos and Claire order everyone to close their windows and stay in their cars. The survivors freeze in terror. Suddenly, thousands of birds fly straight at the people. They decide to flee and quickly start their engines. But one of the cars becomes bogged down in the sand. LJ and Betty are forced to run over to the bus. They succeed, but hundreds of birds rush at the bus. In the confusion, the driver misses a pole in the middle of the road and crashes into it. The bus cannot go any further. The crows are already smashing out the windows of the bus. Claire notices what's happening and tells Carlos that they need to save the people immediately. Claire and Carlos organize the transfer of people from the bus to the back of one of the trucks. Unfortunately, it doesn't come without casualties. Betty, Otto and several other people are taken out by the infected birds. They try to drive the ravens away and destroy them with a flamethrower on one of the trucks. But control over it is lost, and Carlos and one of the rescued girls are already in mortal danger from the fire. Carlos shields himself from the flames. Suddenly the jet of fire stops a meter away from the frightened people. The man looks up and sees Alice in front of him. It was she who used her supernatural powers to make the fire stop. Alice amplifies the flames many times over, and they already cover the entire sky over the desert. Alice saves the group from imminent death, but is exposed. The White Queen informs Dr. Isaacs that satellites have detected increased activity. They are almost certain that the signals are coming from Alice. Isaacs is amazed at how much her abilities have grown. Meanwhile, Alice's new clone is ready for testing. However, she, too, quickly runs out and cannot match the original. The real Alice comes to her senses after the battle with the birds. Outside, people give their farewells to members of the group who did not survive. Carlos introduces Alice to Claire and tells her that she was the one who brought all these people together. The leader of the group thanks Alice for her help. Alice tells Carlos that she had to hide because she was being followed. I couldn't be around you, any of you. I would have gotten you all killed. The girl snuck into the umbrella base, hacked into the computers and downloaded the satellite's trajectory to stay out of the coverage area. 
Because of all this, Carlos and Alice have lost contact and are now very happy to see each other again. The satellite calculates Alice's location. Isaac's computer is 62% sure it's her. She needs to be more careful. Claire thanks the girl again for her help, but asks her to leave. People are very afraid, because hunting Alice could endanger the lives of everyone on the team. Dr. Isaacs doesn't want to lose Alice, so he tells Chairman Wesker to get control of her as soon as possible and prepare a strike team. Wesker doesn't want to take any chances and says that such decisions can only be made at a committee meeting. The doctor fears that he will lose sight of Alice again, and her genetic material is essential to his research. But the chairman of the corporation orders him to wait until the computer confirms that it really is Alice. Alice shows Claire and the other members of her group a diary with notes about Alaska. It's the only place still not infected, so that's where they should be headed. Claire hesitates, she doesn't want to indoctrinate people with unrealistic dreams, because no one knows what really awaits them there. Carlos, on the other hand, supports the idea of going to Alaska. There are fewer and fewer people in their group, and those who are left are ready to give up, so they need a new hope. Claire decides to arrange a vote. The excited and enthusiastic members of the group unanimously vote for Alaska. I hope you're right. Now the group must decide where they are going to replenish their food and gasoline supplies. They have a long way to go, so they need to be well prepared. Nothing useful has been available in small towns for a long time. So Claire suggests they go to Las Vegas. Meanwhile, Dr. Isaacs generates a fake order based on the chairman's voice recording. The committee now ostensibly instructs that immediate action be taken and that control of the entire operation be transferred to Dr. Isaacs. Umbrella Corporation helicopters fly in on Alice's trail. LJ is getting worse from the zombie bite, but he still won't admit to the reason he's not feeling well. The group is already in Vegas. There's not a soul in the former megacity. The city has turned into a desert. Suddenly, the survivors are stopped in their tracks by a strange container. They are forced out of their cars to pull it out of the way. Alice cautiously moves closer to it and senses that someone is there. The huge container suddenly opens. Everyone in the group is alert and ready to open fire. Suddenly dozens of the zombies run out of the container. A horrific massacre ensues. The group members masterfully deal with the zombies by shooting them in the head and slitting their throats. It turns out that Dr. Isaac set the trap. He wants Alice at any cost. He admiringly observes her superpowers and orders his staff to disable her with the satellite signal. Alice freezes for a moment, obeying the signal, but soon the instruments register her resistance. Meanwhile, the battle with the zombies continues. Some members of the group do not survive after all. Suddenly, LJ becomes a similarly aggressive creature. Carlos has to shoot him, but the infected LJ manages to bite him. Alice manages to resist the satellite's influence, the circuit board inside it malfunctions. The girl comes to her senses again and continues the fight. After destroying several more zombies, she heads straight for the employees of the corporation. They try with all their might to stop her, but the old methods no longer work on Alice. She destroys all Umbrella employees. Dr. Isaacs is bitten by a zombie, but he manages to get into a helicopter, where he must be injected with an antivirus. The surviving scientists fly away, and Alice has a new plan. They will not go to Alaska, but fly. To do this, they need to track down the company helicopter and capture it. Dr. Isaacs is already in the underground laboratory. He injects himself with several doses of vaccine. The genetic material of Alice's clones has only increased the creature's power. And now no one knows what will happen to the doctor after the bite of the mutated zombie. The heads of the corporation decide to eliminate Isaacs. One of the committee members shoots the doctor, but he stays alive. Suddenly he develops long tentacles instead of an arm, which he uses to destroy the employees in the lab. Sir! The team of survivors observes the area under which the laboratory is located. The helicopter they need is in a fenced-off area with thousands of zombies surrounding it. Carlos senses the first signs of infection. Alice reassures him and tells him she will get the vaccine. But Carlos realizes it's too late. But he gets an idea. He'll blow up the gas tanker right in the crowd of creepy creatures so that the others can sneak into the gated area. His companions are upset and depressed, but everyone realizes that there is no other way out. They say goodbye, and Carlos gets behind the wheel one last time. The fuel truck rushes forward at breakneck speed, knocking over everyone in its path. Suddenly, the car overturns. Carlos lights his last cigarette and ignites the explosive fuse. Seconds later, a deafening explosion clears the way for Alice, Claire and the other survivors. Everyone in the group manages to get into the helicopter, but Alice refuses to fly with them. She has to get rid of her enemies. Alice sees the trench with the bodies of her clones. She becomes overwhelmed with anger, pulls out her machete and heads for the entrance to the lab. Once downstairs, Alice cautiously inspects the corridors. The girl enters the trash laboratory. Suddenly the White Queen appears before her. She explains that Dr. Isaacs is infected. He was bitten by the creature on which Alice's new clone fluid serum was being tested. The infection has caused an extensive mutation in Isaac's body. Alice realizes that her red fluid is the cure. 
The lab is everything it needs to create an antidote and end the zombie apocalypse. However, the White Queen can no longer contain the monster that Isaacs has turned into. If it breaks free, it will destroy Alice. Now she has to get to Isaacs. The girl descends further down to even lower levels. She explores the dark and dangerous corridors once again. In one of the rooms, Alice finds her own clone in a transparent bowl filled with liquid. Suddenly Alice is attacked by a terrifying mutant, the former Dr. Isaacs. The orb shatters and Alice finds her exact replica in her arms. Frightened by the look of the real Alice, the clone faints. The battle with the mutant Isaacs resumes, but it is not easy to get rid of him. All of his wounds heal instantly. He releases his long tentacles and strangles Alice. At the last moment, she manages to reach for her machete and cuts them off. Isaacs unleashes his tentacles again, but now Alice restrains them with her incredible powers. She throws the mutant back with tremendous force, but he survives again. Alice finds herself in the room with the lasers. She tries to defeat Isaacs by any means necessary. I am the future. Suddenly, a laser grid looms over the mutated doctor and cuts him into small pieces. After a few seconds, the laser might do the same to Alice. But at the last moment, the grid stops and disappears. Alice's clone wakes up in time to sneak into the computer. Yeah, you're the future, all right. The management of the Umbrella Corporation tries unsuccessfully to contact the North American station. The CEO realizes that they have lost the employees of that base. But research must continue anyway. A projection of Alice suddenly appears in the conference room. She reports that she is close, and with her are several of her new friends. These friends turn out to be thousands of Alice clones who are ready to save the world from ultimate destruction. Do you think Alice will succeed in eradicating evil from the planet and defeating the ruthless corporation? Or will the scientists and military prove stronger and win this battle? Share your thoughts in the comments, like and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next videos.